We're lifting the gearbox out of the Centurion. We're just waiting for the teleporter to arrive. Right, so, gearbox all disconnected. There is already a video on our YouTube channel of disconnecting this gearbox on the Avery, so we didn't film that. So the gearbox here, and then I'll get some lights out, but the clutch is there. I don't know what idiot left me in charge of this thing, but I kind of like them. So, here we go. So we're just hooking the chains up to the spare gearbox now. I didn't think when we chucked the gearbox in there, and then the Salon's here, she's jacked up the front, we're doing steering linkages on that. We are all systems go here in a minute. It's not just Antar related. But it'd be simplified if it was. Right, up we go. Should we boom in? Right. Right, this is the spare gearbox out of the way. One stand ready for the gearbox. I've done my stand a bit differently to others I've seen. We can unbolt the front nose, which you'll see when we rebuild the front end of the gearbox. So you can work on the front of the gearbox. Just put a block of wood between there and there. Then it's all on, all on wheels. Yep. 
Right, so here's the gearbox. Now you're wondering probably why have we taken the gearbox out and what is our plans? So we've got some leaky seals in here. This being the output, one of the output drives. It's filthy, but that is just an inherited design of tanks. The way in which the um, coolant system works in the tank, this one being a Centurion, we'll just climb this ladder. They're the front engine louvers in there, and these are the gearbox louvers. And we have two radiators, which are normally laid flat. You can see we have two fans, one there and one there. So the fans suck air through the front engine louvers and bring it, breathe the cold air over the engine and down through the fans and then into the gearbox bay. From the gearbox bay, it then throws it up through the gearbox louvers. So all the dust and everything that's floating around in the air when these fans are spinning gets thrown at the gearbox and effectively sandblasts it. Then while she's out, we're going to set up the steering brakes, rebuild all the, the um, steering expanders and clean all them up and just give it a fresh bill of health really, ready to go back in. We're also going to do the clutch, which you're going to see in the next video on the Centurions. The steering brakes are quite finicky. They'll steer okay if you've got the steering brakes okay, but if you set them up right, they, they do steer beautifully. Right then, our first job being to move the steering drum, like we said. So I shall start. Cracking these off. And last bolt. Now we've just got to slacken the adjuster off because at the minute it's tight. So now we've got two jacking screws to jack the drum off. As you can imagine, having oil on your steering brakes isn't ideal and really does zap the efficiency out of them. So another thing I want to point out, it's quite a cool little trick on the brakes on this, of how they tension the springs. So if you see, the, I've took the um, external springs off, the ones that go on the outside, so you can see. If I stick my spanner here, you can see that I can unwind the tension off that inner spring. Then you wind it back on, you hear it just goes over centre and locks in. So I thought it was pretty neat. You see then it just drops the tension off them. stuck in the piston this side. There we are. Shoes off. Right, next we've got a locking tab and a nut to do in there. So this nut here holds on This flange here. Now these can be really tight or just fall off.
Yeah, I don't know how well the camera picks up. There's a bit of scoring in here, which we need to find out why. And this is the surface that still goes on. Which, although it's polished, isn't grooved or pitted. So our problem is the seal itself. And as you can see, it's messy as hell around there. Now we've got some more locking tabs. Right, that's the first one out, I should get the rest out. I think if I'd have tried, I could have got a longer ratchet. I might go back to the toolbox in a minute. Right, so, we're the same again, we've got two jacking holes. Right then. It should just. Right, so, our Alpha flange is now off the gearbox. Unfortunately, I dropped on the floor, as you saw. I don't know if you can hear on the camera, the seal. The way it's just cracks now, rather than bending, it's gone hard, which is why she's leaking. So our first job is to get the bearing out. Hop in the voice. And we've got a dra brass punch. Which is soft. Josh, if you catch the, the bearing. One bearing. Now we need the seal out. So yeah, you can see it's just got hard. So our next job is we need to wind our two jacking screws out. So that is the jacking screws out. So now we shall pop them in the ultra cleaner. with the rest of the bits and uh, we'll join you back once they're clean. Checking the bearing. Obviously these bearings can get quite pricey quite quickly so we wouldn't replace them unnecessarily. So we always clean them all out. Obviously this gearbox runs on OC600 oil which is like treacle and bloody expensive too. So Pull the bearings out and I spray clutch and brake cleaner into them to clean them out. What you want to do is, so I, I use clutch and brake cleaner, I spray it in the race as it's been spun. The idea is you need to wash all of the oil and contaminants out there so you can really get a listen to the bearing itself. I'm looking for a nice free running bearing that is 
comes to a gentle stop, it doesn't suddenly stop. Here's my first thing I'm looking for, and you can hear. Which is what that is doing. And then any other noises, lumps and bumps. Probably gonna sound awful in this microphone, but it is actually quite a nice bearing. That is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, so far I'm pleased with the bearing. Our next job is to have a glance in through the in the case, see if we can get a look at the race. It's quite hard with this. This bearing is of pressed brass race construction. So which does make it particularly hard to having a look at the race in a race. You can just peek in, probably not on the camera. Have a look at the balls. But yeah, we we we're, we're happy with that. So our next job is to lube it up. Bearings, once you drop all the oil out of them, you clean it all out so it's just metal on metal, they sound terrible. They do sound awful. You can't, you can't tell what the bearing's like until you do. You wash it out, clean it out, and have a good look. So I always use engine assembly lube on it. You could just use whatever oil's in the gearbox. I haven't got tubs of that. I've got, obviously, engine assembly lube in a little bottle. We've got to remember to prelude the bearing after washing it out. So, when well, the first time this box starts spinning over and there's a load on that output, you know, some of these bearings are splash lubricated. There is an oil pump inside the gearbox, which pumps oil around the shafts as well. But we don't want that first start up and that first lot of load to be done with no oil in it, because that'll just write the bearing off. So the problem is we need to make sure we, we lube it up. You can see it going around, the balls are already coated in it. So we get a spin on that now. See, that's now nice and quiet again. Because it's loaded full of oil, you can't spin it, which is why you have to wash it out to get a sense of what they're like. So, out of the ultimate cleaner. Which has done a pretty damn good job, to be fair. Now we need to put our seal in there. So we need to go to the press for that. So if Josh brings the bearing retainer as well. And we head to the vise, not the vise, the press. This is our press. We want both them bits are still there. We'll pop them on there. I always make sure stuff really sealed, so I always stick a bit of bearing retainer on a, on a rubber seal into an old housing. Um, do you need to? Probably not. But that extra little bit of just to help it. Well, the housing's good and the seal's brand new, but I don't know. I always like to cover all bases. So we didn't chuck the lot in there, just, just a small smear around the outside. So you pop here underneath the press, get to the seal, the first point where it wants to start going in. Yep. I've got a flat plate that is bigger than the seal. So you're pushing it down evenly. Wind him down to a nearly there. And luckily I've got an automated press, so I just go press down and it's working. Voice activated and everything. Right, right, so that's bearing back in. So we're going to press him down. Yep, press down. See, it's really good this voice activated control stuff. So bearing fitted, seal fitted, 
Ready for paint. I use when I'm masking up. If you've got like an edge like that, you want to cut the tape. If you get a file, you just go along it. Like so. You can see that it's cut that quite nicely. That side masked up nice and easy. So we come, when it comes to painting things, we've got a couple of different processes we do and what we do. So you said, we chuck it in the ultimate cleaner and that thing is a magic box. You put greasy painted stuff in there, you have a cup of coffee, you come back to it and you get bare metal out. They are so underrated. Um, and they're not a lot of money either. So we put it in the ultimate cleaner and we take it out. Um, bits of rust, if, so if paint has flaked off and there's rust, you do need to wire brush them and clean that up give it a bit of a key up, then we paint it. So on the flanges and the small stuff, we've gone for etch primer. In my humble opinion, it's slightly better. Um, and on the gearbox, we've gone for red oxide. Now originally they are red oxide, that's how they come out of the factory, so it'll stay in red oxide. And um, the flanges and bits of pieces will go black. I don't know why they were left in red oxide. I guess time. And you can't see it, so but they've come up lovely. So that's all ready. So we've left the mating faces for the brake adjusters and expander um, metal. And then obviously the baiting face for the drum metal and the mating face for the seal. So I think that's all metal. But the rest of that's had a fresh coat of paint and looking smart. The reason we leave these bare is once you set the brakes up, you'll see you, we need to adjust them slightly and they need to be able to just move that a little bit up or a little bit down. Um, so you do, to make sure it doesn't bind up, you leave them bare and slightly coated in copper slip. Right, now that our um, seal and bearing plate that goes bolts to the end of the gearbox is painted, it's ready to refit it. Now I'm going to fit this with some Worth RTV. Um, I like the liquid gaskets, or gases in a can. If your services are, you know, they're not brand new, it's not freshly machined. Paper gaskets sometimes aren't quite the best. But there is, there is places and there is times where you can't replace it and you have to put a paper gasket in. <clears throat> so I'll give you this, I'll use this as an example. So our bearing plate, he floats in this housing. He doesn't butt up to the inner shoulder there or the inner shoulder here. He just floats in this housing and supports the, um, the drive. So it doesn't matter. The paper gasket would have, which in this case was 10 foul, because I did measure it, 10 foul thick. So it doesn't matter that in fact we pushed it in 10 foul. There is a lot of flanges and plates and stuff that you can't replace and you have to run the paper gasket. And it's important you get the right thickness. Um, a lot of um, gearboxes and stuff on the dry flanges, they have some thick gaskets, you know, 120 foul, 130 foul thick. Without that, the, the, um, the dry flange is sitting against the bearing and the ceiling flange isn't sitting against the ceiling face on the gearbox. So you'll have a big gap and it'll just leak oil out. So there is certain situations where you can't and you have to run paper gaskets and stuff. Um, and in which case, I'd seal them on with, would make a new paper gasket and we'd seal it with Heilemar. But in this case, we're going to use the uh, RTV. 
So we need to make sure everything is clean. So it'll stick and good chance of sealing. Um, I do that with clutch and brake cleaner and just wipe around with a, with a bit of tissue. And also, there is a couple of high spots where, where we jacked it off using the jacking bolts. As, that, as them bolts screw into the flanges, you need to make sure there's no high spots left and it's going to hold the flange away. So I do that with just a wet stone, just make sure they're down and flush. It doesn't matter if it's pushed in slightly, but we can't have any raised edges that's going to hinder sealing. Right, so our first bit to put in is these two large washers. Go in there. And these go in here. Now the idea of that is to stop too much oil coming through and sitting against the seal. We need a certain amount of oil to come through here just to lubricate that bearing. We don't need tons and tons of it. Now we need to fit the, the outer plate. So he goes on here. Now we need, he will need tapping home. The important bit is though, because it needs to happen home, we need, once it's home, we need to make sure these holes are going to line up. It's really easy to get it slightly the wrong angle. So I normally stick a bolt through the hole and see where a couple of bolts. I think that's pretty good. Keep making sure you're happy with it as it goes. Once we get it there, we can then use a bolt to start pulling it home. Right, now we need our bolts <coughs> and locking tabs. Right, so I'll take these two out, put these ones in and repeat the process. Right, now we've got to set these poxy locking tabs. Right, our next bit to fit is going to be the dry flange. I need to draw it on the last little bit of way with the bolt. Making sure it's going home nicely. Right. 
again, we can't, we'll talk this once all the brakes built up. So, our adjuster. Stripped it out. How does he work? So we've got two pins that go in, one this way and one this way. And we've got these slots here that stops it rotating and keeps it from tracked in the right place. Also works as our, uh, as our stop. With these little pins here. You have to watch these. These can get bent and then snap off if they're poorly adjusted. So what causes the adjuster to come on? Well, we've got this plate here. So what happens is once that is pushed up, it forces this to slide out. Now that is connected. So that threads in the back here. And he pins to this bit. So it's been pushed up by the adjuster at the back. Now once it's adjusting up, you'll notice it's got a nice clicking noise that helps indicate they are, and that is just this bit of spring still going into these indents. You do have to watch these. These crack on this face here. That was hardened, hardened steel, and it is it's slightly brittle, and it does they crack, and sometimes these come off. But we're all good on this one. So rebuilding. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give it all a clean and we'll put it together on the, in the vise. Right, so we need to lube up this housing. Do that with the old uh, cotton slip. So our next job being to assemble, assemble our adjuster. So there's two flats for this to sit on. Then we want to Put a little pin in. That is now connected. Right, we can now fit this into there. Adjust this all the way out. That is now all the way out. We just need to back him off. So our two wedges line up to where the pins are going to come from. Same thing again, we're going to put in our stop screw.
Right, so there is a cap that goes on here, but we'll do that later on. I just want to, I'll put it on and adjust it up and make sure she's all working okay. And uh, see what's going on before we finally put the cap back on. Right, so, next adjuster. So, the expander. How does it work? So, this is what's pulled by the brake linkage. And she pulls down. Acting on these two balls, all the bearings, that go on these runners here that are ramped. As this is pulled, this wedge shape pulls in the bearings and then pushes the expander out, which takes the pads to the drum. There's a little bias valve in here for the plunger to make sure if that, you know, if the top pad come up first, this it can slide over and pull both pads up. So that's how that works, it's not rocket science, it's just, yeah, we... I need a pin that goes in there, a little um, rivet. We ain't got one on the shelf, so we've, rather than wait, we've carried on and used one of the spares, and we shall reveal that one, throw that on the shelf as a spare. Right, so, let's bolt them on. Right, so, fitting the adjuster. The expander's already fitted. We're now fitting the adjuster, which is fitted here. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, it does want a bit, little bit, bit of the sliding stuff. It does actually. I've forgotten. I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want a lot. Now we can fit our expander, which goes that way. There's a bolt in the back here that you had to put in when building up the gearbox to fit this. That one there, you can't get it out with the gear we've built up. How annoyed would you be if you forgot to put that in? Be a Friday afternoon, wouldn't it? Friday afternoon. Quickly push into the gearbox. Like bugger, doesn't need it. Bolt the adjuster on. Important bit is. We want it loose, so it will slide, but not enough that it wobbles too much. So like we say, we've got to strip these out and find the circuit files, they're here. So there's just, they just need re-greasing, cleaning up. While you've got it apart, you might as well do it all. I hate fiddly little circlips. Oh, got it, see? Be mortified when he sees that. They're just rusty. But that is no match for our ultimate cleaner. And the same story as that. So we'll get that cleaned up. That's this shoe done. Our next shoe is slightly more complicated and got something else going on. So let's grab that. Right, so this shoe has this adjust this this um, bar in it. So as the expander, which is on one side, comes down, look, I can push down here, and then it pushes. So what's that's doing is rather than the expander opening and just opening both pads here, 
is opening this one, this side, and this one, this side. So it's twin lead and shoe. Therefore, it works as just as efficient as it does forwards as going backwards. And these aren't, although they are brakes, these are, these, this is steering brakes. This is how it steers. It locks this drum, which is how it steers the tank. So it can be going either way, so you need a, a good, efficient braking is forwards as you do backwards. Whereas not your car and stuff, it doesn't particularly matter. Because most of your braking is done forwards. And again, it's just a bit rusty, doesn't adjust up particularly well. So we'll get all this out. Here it is. It did look like that circlip just bent open rather than... I think it did. A very small little hat punch. There's the same similar story, just gotten damp and gone rusty. stuck and yeah same similar story again just needing cleaning up needing oh. so the wash on that one went oh So what we've got to do is remove, our plan is to remove all of this paint around these pins and stuff because it's just it's like a two mil fig. Clean it up, grease it up, put it back together and then we'll show you set the brakes up. So, we are nicely turning pins. We can turn them up and get them, they're pretty much in the right place. That linkage rod that we cleaned up and adjusted up, to help make it twin lead and shoe, we've now got to adjust up. We want to do that until we take all the slack out. So we've got a DTI gauge on there. So we just go until that starts to move the needle. Okay, that one. There? Yep, that one, he, he went like too foul. Well, that's all, that's all the slack out of the linkage rod. Now we need to put the brake job on so we can set the uh, brake adjuster up. Let's get that lifted. How am I gonna see the bolt holes? I get on the drum for the shoes first, aren't I? Just in the shoes. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. If I give you the cup of soup. I'll get the socket. There we go. It's appropriately sized. <laughs> yeah. That drum, appropriately sized. Right, so now the drum's on, now we need to adjust the pads up so the pads meet the drum. We do that, the adjust at the back there. Now, if you remember, we left the bolts loose and that's to allow it to move up and down ever so slightly to centralise itself. If you look at the other side, which we haven't done yet, the holes are elongated. So leave the bolts loose and as we adjust that up, that's just going to centralise itself. Maybe the top pad can be worn or the bottom pad. It just makes sure it gets in the middle so you get maximum efficiency out of both pads. Well, just as here at the back here, that is a quarter Whitworth hex. The clicks are quite audible. So now we get now we've got the job of making sure the pads are also in the middle side to side so we do that with our favorite tool big old hammer and a block of wood so let's get you on the tripod because you might find once you centralize them you might get a few more clicks out of it and when you're only backing them off four clicks every click counts So you just repeat this process until you get don't get any more. And yes, this is a job that was done in the tank. <laughs> no, we don't know how. One. Two. Three. Four. Four. Just four. Right, let's finish this drum. We're now trusting Josh the sledgehammer, and for once, I'm actually doing the filming. Standing Not far too enough away. Arms length. Oh, I meant Josh, but hit it. Rawhide hammer. I I feel like this is a very inefficient way of cutting a piece of wood. Right, so now we're bangled around the outside of there and we don't get any more clicks on the adjuster. She is now fully adjusted up. The next step we do with that is in the tank when we set up the steering tillers to it. 
but for now that is done so let me show you the gearbox so we, she give me a couple of weeks before she goes back in so we've taped up all of the we don't want crap and stuff to get into especially there because oil comes out of the gearbox and into the clutch but she now awaits fitting clutch is now painted so we're going to do a film on rebuilding that and all the clutch springs and bits and pieces and Antar is getting bits back on and starting to weld patches and stuff back into it so yeah, if you like the old video, give us a thumbs up and uh, we shall see you in the next one.